Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the conversation. Once again, I'm your host, Roxanne Grace. Guys, today we are talking to Phil Joel. You don't want to miss it. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this conversation. I am so excited that today we're talking to Phil Joel of Newsboys United. He's also the lead singer for Zealand Worship. And of course, we're going to talk about his brand new solo album, Better Than I Found It. Let's go ahead and bring in the man himself, Phil Joel. What's hey up, Phil? Roxanne, good to see you. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. As you can hear my voice, I have a little bit of a cold, but I'm doing great. Life is great. God is good. You've got that, you've smoked two packs of cigarettes a day sound to your voice. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to go run and hide and cry now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. It's yeah, cool. Oh, it's a little. Cool. Okay. All right. I'm going I'm yeah. to rock that. I'm going to rock that voice. Um, I know that little... you are in New Zealand right now because you're getting ready yes. for a cool festival. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, festival one here in New Zealand. A uh, great festival. And actually, New Zealand is really the only country on the planet right now that is able to do live concerts, you know, um, and, and events. So uh, it's a privilege. You know, we had to do two weeks of quarantining in a hotel before we were allowed into the general populace. So it was, that was fun, you know. You, so you get shuffled from the airport, you fly from LAX, you land in, in, in Auckland, you get put in a little shuttle and you get taken to a, a hotel and, you know, people with like hazmat suits on, shuffle you to your room and then they deliver food to your door and <laughs> that's that's kind of it but we had a great room and we had a great view and it was the food was good and it was a little staycation you well, know staycation but now, we're, now we're out now we're well, out and i'm yeah excited about it Praise God you had a good view and the food was good because that would be really difficult for me to be quarantined for two weeks. Mind you, we are kind of quarantining ourselves right now because both my husband and myself uh, have this nasty cold and we haven't gotten right. tested. Yet. We haven't gotten tested yet, but uh, we plan to do that as soon as we can finish up work, working from home today. So, Well, we um been there, done that, you know, uh, you know, COVID is so, <laughs> well, so 2020, it? so 2020, you're so behind. I, yeah. I, I know, right? I guess I've been doing too good of a job. But I yeah, it's so, it's so 2020. It's so 2020. We so, had one. We had one show in uh, the end of October, and you know we we're so excited because we hadn't really done any touring, and I think we we're all a little bit eager. And the promoter was probably a little bit overzealous. <clears throat> and he filled this place up with people, and there wasn't the masks, there wasn't the distancing. Both of our buses, two two tour buses full of people. 20, you know, our band and crew, 24 of us, all got COVID. <gasps> and took it, you know, of course, we took it home to our families. And uh, three or four days later, we all started getting symptoms and our families and everything. So it's real, Roxanne. It's very real. And it's very I mean, contagious. Phil, I know it's real. No doubt. No doubt. Like, uh, yeah. we've been trying to be really careful. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I absolutely know it's real. That's so crazy that that really happened, though. It really happened. <laughs> you didn't wear the mask and you guys really got sick. Crazy. Well, yeah, we thought we were being careful, but you know, when you've got, you know, I don't know if you've been on a tour bus. I'm sure you have. You know, it's like being a submarine with a bunch of sweaty yeah. guys. <laughs> so it absolutely yeah. is. It absolutely exactly like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, Phil, I know that you grew up in uh, in New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about you know uh, <clears throat> your childhood. Uh, raised in a Christian home. Yes. Uh, which. Like I said, uh, a gift. That's where I was sort of introduced to to faith, if you will. And um, you know, over the course of those years, you know, moving forward, uh, my faith is formed, and it still is. <laughs> it's forming and reforming all the time. Um, but you know, New Zealand's kind of uh, wonderful in that it's very diverse. You've got oh, a lot of different people groups here, and. Um, it's really a melting pot. And so there are a lot of different faces and shades and colors and sizes and shapes and people who worship differently and think differently and have different worldviews. And, um, and are all crammed together here on this, you know, in this uh, few little peninsulas in this, you know, between a couple of harbors and the city that I am from and um, kind of been forced to figure out how do we do this? You know, and I think, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing for the church and to sort of take a look at, at themselves, you know, are, they, are we going to become inward and isolate, or are we going to be outward? 
are we going to be, you know, are we going to be embracing of those who are around us? How are we going to uh, look out for our fellow man, even if our fellow man here, he doesn't look like us, you know, or think like us or, or worship like us. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's almost, and I think these are some of the things that even in America that we are, we're wrestling with right now. We're struggling mm -hmm. to to find our place as people of faith and as, as, as Christ followers. And I, and I think it's an okay wrestle for us right now. You know, let's not retreat. Let's be a little more outward thinking. And how do I, how do we do this? How do we find our place? How do we uh, care for our fellow man, even if we don't agree with certain aspects of how they live? So anyway, I, that was probably a long answer to a very short <laughs> question about geography. But. No, I love it. I love, I love that thought. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so I guess talking about your faith, uh, you know, we just said you were raised in a Christian home. Have you always been consistent in your walk with the Lord or did you ever have that like personal come to Jesus moment? Have, have you? Yes. <laughs> you've been, well, you've been completely consistent in your walk with the Lord. No, 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 no. I had major come to Jesus moments. Oh yeah. Moments. I still, I still am. <laughs> um, yeah, I still am. No, there's, it's, you know, there's definitely been ups and downs. Yeah, for sure. Ups and downs and moments of doubt and then moments of, um, of realization that maybe certain things that I've taken on board as a, as a kid, oh, they don't fit now they don't or i don't see that things quite that way and and god's like that he's cool he's in that he'll allow sort of a deconstruction of certain aspects of our faith and then and then the best part is the reconstruction too you know okay uh and as long as that reconstruction is built on the fact that god is really good and he really likes us he loves us all and um and when we understand that you know when we're receiving that from him then makes it a little bit easier to give it away let's hope you know so Let's talk about how you guys started with the Newsboys. How did you end up oh, joining the Newsboys? Yeah, uh, well, that's we're talking 26 years ago. Oh. I uh, I was in a band here in New Zealand and called Drinkwater. And if you want a little flashback in musical production and how we did things back in the 90s, you can look up Drinkwater and have a bit of a giggle. Um, <laughs> but we were opening for okay. the Newsboys. They They were on tour from Australia they were touring here and we opened, we were the opening act mm -hmm. and we got on really well with, with the newsboys guys. And, uh, they were based in the U S at that point and they came back to the States. They really just started though in the night, the United States and their bass player left and they thought, Hey, what about that guy from New Zealand? He, he seems crazy enough to maybe, you know, come on and join the circus with us. So, uh, I got a phone call and, uh, within about, 36 hours, 48 hours, time periods, whatever. I I found myself flying across the ocean to Los Angeles and uh, joined the band. Yeah, it was one of those amazing three o'clock in the morning phone calls and um, it's been a wild ride, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Well, praise God. Obviously, God had a major plan there. And yes, I indeed. know that during quarantine, you just put together your own solo album called Better Than yeah. I Found. It. Tell us a little bit about Better Than I Found It. Yeah. Well, uh, March the 12th, we were touring Newsboys United and, um, you know, the whole COVID thing kind of just came mm -hmm. crashing in and we got sent home. Go home, fellas. Um, you know, we'll call you. <laughs> right. And uh, so all of a sudden, like a lot of us, we had time on our hands. And for me, that meant, oh, this is exciting. I've got time to actually produce some of these songs that I've been writing. And so I'd written a lot of songs in 2019 and then 2020, everyone's isolating. And I was, I, uh, my wife said, get out to the studio and get cracking. So uh, I had a little studio behind the house and it's, you know, it's nothing fancy. It's just, you know, a little bit of equipment and uh, some plants and, uh, you know, and the dog comes out and hangs out with me. And uh, so I went out there and, recorded these songs and the weird thing is Roxanne these I feel like the songs I wrote in 2019 recorded in 2020 and that just came out recently this year are kind of right on time they're right on time for now and uh that to me is you know a bit of a god thing you know which I I kind of enjoy um you know seeing those little moves of, uh, of God and um, because I feel like we do need a lot of, uh, more togetherness and there's a lot of 
themes, themes on this record about unity, about reaching across the table, about saying, hey, let's, let, me, let me walk this journey out with you. Even if I don't understand you, get you, look like you again, or worship like you, how can I serve you more than anything? How can I love you and love you well, um, as opposed to come against, you know? And so I, I think, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun to watch the timing of it, you know? Oh, excited that's about. Really interesting. So that so you wrote it a while ago, and I was listening to the album last night. It's very good, by the way, oh, and it you. is very timely, very very timely. And I feel like people can take so much uh, from it right now, especially for this season. And a really cool thing too is that I saw that it just came out January twenty second, which is our oldest daughter's birthday. So good, good, no good way. Of dates. Yeah. So it's super rad. Right. Wow, the album is fantastic. I think. Um, mm -hmm. The song that hit me the most when I was listening to it last evening was the single, uh, you know, Better Than I Found It. Want to tell me a little bit about the heart behind that? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I um, I have been concerned. <laughs> it's a lighthearted sort of sounding song, you know, it's fun. I like to, I like to have fun, you know, of course. Uh, and it's sort of a bouncy little, little track. But it's, it's really birthed out of a concern for, mm. for, for me of um, uh, of the fact that we are here, you know, if we believe in a creator come on, and we believe that, you know, that, 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 that all this wonderful stuff is, is a part of his handiwork, you know, uh, then, then, then what better way to sort of honour our creator than honour and look after this creation? Come on. And, um, I think a lot of the world is kind of catching on to this. Obviously, there are things that are going awry, which we need to sort of work hard to rectify and whatnot. And even the church in different countries are sort of saying, "Hey, how can we how can we help? How can we serve our fellow man by looking after the planet and and for the generations coming through? Because it's the only planet we've got right now, you know." Exactly. And uh, and and I guess the concern has been that a lot of and that, you know plenty of church voices I've heard um, sort of express the sentiment of, "Well, you know." If, if we're all getting out of here anyway, you know, it's all going down. It's all going to fall apart. So, you know, we, we, it doesn't matter. You know, it's all going to burn. <laughs> like, what is that? You know, we've got kids, Roxanne. You know, we've got exactly. skin in the game here. You know, we want exactly. these kids to enjoy this wonderful creation that, exactly. that we, we get to uh, enjoy. And we want to leave it better than we found it. Let's hope. Um, so, and, 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 you know, we don't have to agree on policy and this and that. It doesn't have to become all political. But we have to be, I think it would be nice if, we as people of faith would be at the front saying, hey, how can I help? What can I sacrifice maybe to for the sake of others moving forward? What do I need to engage in? What do I need to push aside? How can I clear the clutter here so that I can be um, a good steward of right, this planet? Absolutely. You know, and I know it's I know it beca it's become a little bit of a divisive little issue in the church in America, whereas, I mean, you know, I observe around the world, the church is pretty united on this front and saying, hey, we need to do what we can do. And so I'd like American, kind of American believers to kind of catch up on this front, you know, and say, all right, I don't know what's going on. Let's take a look at it. Something's happening and how can I help? You know, I, but, but that's my, that, that, what the wonder of songwriting, the joy of it is mm. you can write a song about one thing and maybe some of your viewers will watch this interview and they'll go, oh, that's what it was written about. Maybe others will never hear this interview and, and will derive a different meaning and pull some hope and some, you know, encouragement from it. I like that. The songwriting is it's pretty fun on that front. Well, I, I think that's the beauty of music, that we can all take personal messages uh, from art because yeah. music is art. But I love your thoughts on that. And I do believe uh, the same thing that, you know, as as believers, as ones that are stewarding this land that God has given us, we definitely need to yes. do our part and maybe care a little bit more, you know, about uh -huh. what's around us. So I absolutely love yeah. that. I heard too that in your uh, album that you just came out with, um, that your son is a brilliant uh, drummer and he participated yeah. in all of it, and so that that's really cool to be able to. Yeah. Do that. Oh, that was super fun. You know, he's he he. I don't think he really understands what he's got. You know, because there's equipment all over you know, our house, the guitars everywhere. And, and we've got the studio out there and then we've set him up with his own little studio in his, in his, his room there. And he's, um, so he's got access to all of this stuff that he's had right. for years. And so he's kind of grown up in it. And the kid has more talent in his little finger than I have in my whole body. And um, he was able to come in and throw little bits of paint at the canvas there and help me 
you know, with, with certain moments, you know, it's, and, and he's got that 16 year old, mm-hmm. you know, sensibility where I do something and he go, dad, that's so not cool. You know, <laughs> that's so 1992. And I'm like, Oh, it is. Yeah. He goes, that, maybe you should do it like this, you know? And so he helped on a lot of fronts. Yeah. He's, he, and he's going to be playing drums for me at this music festival in a, in a oh, few days. Here. So cool. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, though, because I, I look at my kids and I'm like, you guys are so talented. You know, I have to tell my yeah. oldest daughter who just turned 18 and it's still my mind is blown because I'm like, how are you going to be going to college? Like, aren't I in college? Like, something's wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> but she's so, they're all, all my kids are so talented. And I'm like, if I only had that talent, you know, but there's all, they're still like, you know, forming and, and realizing who they are in God and in themselves. Yeah. and with these giftings and stuff and just realizing it yeah. and whatnot. But I love that. I love that you, you know, you pull your son on board and have him participate in your, in your crafts. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I yeah. know Phil that you also wrote a book recently and so about a year ago, you came out with a new book called Redwoods mm. and Wales becoming who you actually are. You want to tell us a little bit about that? There it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> every time, every time I hear the title of that book, I kind of giggle because I love it. <laughs> It's a little, it's definitely a little bit hippie-ish, you know. <laughs> I guess I'm a hippie. Um, but, you know, it, uh, it, was, it was birthed out of an experience I had in, in Northern California. Where, where are you guys based? So we are actually technically based out of L.A., but my husband yeah. and myself, our family, we, we split up our time between um, Los Angeles, like California, and Arizona, like uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix oh, area. Wow. And so okay. we go back and forth, but Southern yeah. California, that's our jam. So tell me Southern about California. It. Well, this is Northern California. Oh, you said Northern. So oh, my bad. No, I don't know. Northern. Anything about yeah. It's a little, it's a little too, too chilly, a little too chilly for you probably. Yeah, it's a little too you know? chilly, yeah. Yeah. But it, it reminds me a lot of New Zealand, you know, it's, it's the coastline's a little more rugged. You've got these redwoods, beautiful trees, and you've got sort of, um, oh, right, yeah. it's a little, you know, misty and whatnot. And, uh, I love it. I really love that area. And so I was up there. I had a, a couple of days off between concerts. And um, so I rented a car and I drove up the coast. And I, anyway, I was taking a walk on the beach late at night. And as I was approaching some rocks to walk around, I realized these are not rocks. This is a whale. There's a oh. whale on the beach, you know, and it was um, it had died. It, it wasn't breathing. It wasn't moving, doing anything. And um, yeah, it was kind of it was a moment, you know, of like, oh, oh, this, this is really not good. This is not, no. it wasn't that it was just like surprising and this is a whale. It was just, there was something deeper. It was like, this isn't right. This is not meant to be here. <laughs> right. This should be out there in the water, enjoying the flow and enjoying uh, its, you know, pod, its people and doing its thing, heading in the right direction. And um, it turns out that these whales, they, are mi- they migrate from Mexico down the coast to uh to uh, from canada down to mexico and uh what will happen too often actually is that especially with the young ones they will they will get distracted something will catch their eye and they will they'll move toward it and end up chasing things they're not meant to be chasing and they'll get disoriented and they'll lose their way and end up oftentimes on the beach breathing shallow, dying slowly. And I, you know, I thought, gosh, that's kind of a horrible metaphor for how a lot of us, where a lot of us find ourselves, you know, sort of breathing shallow and dying slowly, not really sure what happened, not really sure where we got off track and, um, and, and a little bit unsure as to how to get back. And uh, the next day I was driving in the redwood forests. You know, I don't know if you've been up there, but, you know, those trees, man, they're just like, you know, they're bigger than they're bigger than this kitchen I'm sitting in, you know, the trunks right. and they're, 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 some of them are thousands of years old and they, their roots run deep and they're connected with one another and they're growing tall. And uh, this particular grove that I drove past uh, initially ran ar- alongside a river. And to me, it was just this biblical image of Psalm 1 and, and Jeremiah 17 that talks about uh, how blessed the man is who, 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 who puts his trust in the Lord, whose hope is in him. He'll, he'll be like a tree planted by the river with his roots running deep. And when the heat comes, he won't be afraid. And in the year of drought, he won't be anxious, but rather his leaves will get greener and he'll bear fruit. Mm. And 
again, being a bit of a hippie, I quite like that metaphor. You know, <laughs> I like the idea of getting greener, getting fresher, and um, and 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 bearing fruit. You know, a tree, uh, and uh, as we experience more of God in our lives, we, we're supposed to become, you know, fruitful. It's supposed to be, it should be a natural out. Uh, out, outbirth, outgrowth of 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 God in our lives. You know, love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and kindness, uh, faithfulness. What's the last one? Self control. Um, yeah, and so that that's God's picture for our lives. That we'd be useful. That we'd be fruitful. That we would be able to be like these trees, provide shade for for someone. You know, for people that are in need. And so, um, not stranded, not breathing shallow. And and the saddest part about you know that. That it's to judge or condemn, but it's like, gosh, you know, when we find ourselves breathing shallow and dying slowly, um, because we've 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 allowed certain things into our lives to grow and take over and, and hit us off track, it's sad. Because not just for us, but it's sad for those around us who don't get to enjoy the fullness of maybe who we are, you know, and how, and what we can bring to the table. And that's 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 a bummer, you know. And I think I think God gets he gets sad for us. Sometimes, you know, not mad at us as much as mad for us and maybe sad for us at different points when we allow ourselves to get ripped off. But, you know, we can get back into the flow if we uh, we need to sort of start to identify some of the things that maybe have, have pulled us off track and then and then, uh, uh, you know, cry out for help, begin there and then start moving back in the right direction. And, and things can happen quick. You know, oftentimes we get off track slowly. We can get back on track quickly. We really can. You know, it doesn't have to be an arduous life struggle. But um, yeah, that's what the book's about. Anyway, long answer to a short question. <laughs> it's still available. You can buy it there, you know, philjoel.com. Yeah. yeah. Go there, buy a whole bunch, you know, and then I'll buy some groceries. Yes, exactly. I, I think that is a very um, profound and powerful answer. I think that now I want to read the book. I definitely want to read the book, and I'm glad that you allowed for it like that because it's it's wow. an easy read. It's an easy read. I mean, it's it's 140 pages or something like that. You know, big words spaced apart, <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted it to be. You know, like if you're going to pick up a book, I want people to pick it up, start reading it, and finish it. You know, I don't know how many books I've started and not finished. So um, it's an easy read for people that don't really like reading a whole lot. It's it's pretty basic. Yeah. <laughs> So, Phil, let me let me ask you this. Um, what would you say your life message is? If somebody were to read your book or hear your music or hear you speak somewhere, or even come across this, what is the message that you hope they're taking from you? Hmm. <laughs> I, guess saying, I, gosh. Sorry. I think, <laughs> I I think the screen that. is frozen. <laughs> um I don't know. My hard drive's freezing up on that question. Boy, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, you know, the biggest, I have, I have the biggest word in my vocabulary. It's, it's, it's the one I bring out every now and then if I want to be impressive. It's mm -hmm. what is, what's, what's my epistemological base? Ooh, you like that word? <laughs> Basically at probably... the end of the, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, what does it boil down to? And right. to me, it boils down to the fact God's good. Mm, come on. He's really good. And um, he's a lot better than we think. He's a lot more gracious than we think, a lot more compassionate and loving and uh, accepting and forgiving uh, than, than we are. Yeah. We, you know, we try and make God out to be like us. And he's not. He's a whole lot better than we are, uh, even though we are created in his image. Um, but he's... You know, we've got the sort of the whispers and the shadows of his attributes, but he's he's really good. Yeah. And uh, let's just start there. Start there. And I know that can be tough when our surroundings and, and our situations can be tough. But the bottom line is he can be trusted because he's good and he's got ideas and he's got he's got he's got ways to move us along. You know, especially when we surrender. And so I don't know. That, you know, I don't know. You you stumped me. That's a big question. But but I think if we can if we if it's a good place to start at any point. It's a good place to sort of ponder, actually. Good thing to ponder. Well, I, I think that's an excellent answer. I think that you and I both 
uh, consider, I would definitely consider myself a miracle. And I know that you're a miracle. And I yeah. think we're both testimonies of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. You know, the Bible says that God tells in the Bible that he will never leave us or forsake us. And that truth probably has screamed louder in my life than anything else, because he has been the most faithful one through the good, bad, the ugly, the beautiful, everything. And there's yeah. no person we will ever meet that is as good and faithful and awesome as he. And, you know, one more thing I want to throw in here. I know it's your interview, not mine, but, you know, another scripture. Absolutely. No, you're, doing, you're doing great. Okay, Keep going. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but another scripture I love is just, you know, when the Bible tells us that God is love. And sometimes we can't really as humans grasp or fathom that, you know, we love people. I love my husband. You love your wife. We love our kids. You know, we love our family and our friends and, and people around us. Uh, but to really grasp that God doesn't operate in love. He doesn't have love, but he is the essence of love. It to me is is so powerful to know that like, wow, our creator truly loves us beyond what we can actually fathom. Like that's so rad. Oh, yeah. Isn't that so cool? Mm -hmm. so I, oh, I, yeah. love what, I love what you're saying. He is, he's good. He's good. Yeah, he yeah. is. And you know, what you're saying, I think, you know, can bring a little, it, for some, it may just go, uh, you know, <laughs> um, that freezes the hard drive. I don't know what you're saying, but I think there's a lot, we have a lot of voices, you know, we've, got, we've all got these things, cool. you know, not very far away. And um, a lot of voices trying to speak, you know, I look at my screen just now, you know, people are sending me yeah. messages and, and we're getting, um, you know, get calls and we got social media feeds and we got all this information coming in and a thousand voices trying to get our attention. Um, and it doesn't hurt for us to sort of decide at different points, I'm going to slow down. Yeah. I'm going to clear the clutter and I'm going to turn some things off or throw some things away um, if need be. And um and get back to being still and, 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 and allowing ourselves to experience just what you said, you know, that, that God does love us. Thanks for okay. You know, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. That's, that's a big one. You know, um, I think that's the story of the prodigal son. You know, the, the dad's just waiting. They're kind of coming, waiting for his son to come back. And when his son comes back, he, he just, he basically just says, you're okay. I got you. I got you, you big dummy. You know, you could have come back a lot earlier. I got you. you. Come on, come on in. So, yeah, it's good stuff. I'm glad we talked. Yeah, that's great stuff. Okay, last question that I'm going to throw at you today. Um, could you just give, I mean, I feel like you've already just conquered that and what you just said, but people are watching, as you know, and as you were just basically uh, alluding to, um, that are having a tough time. People are hurting. Mm -hmm. It's real. You know, we're all in different places. We all have different struggles. I always try to remind people, like, be kind to everybody because I promise you, the person next mm. to you is facing their own challenges. You know, we all have our challenges, yes. every single one of us. But we know that last year, the last 12 months specifically, have just been insanely hard. We only have our own stuff, but we have all the other stuff going around in our world. Um, mm -hmm. you know, what what word of encouragement would you give to our viewers? Um, I don't know. I don't know, right? <laughs> Are we still on? <laughs> um, Frozen. Uh, no, nah, I don't know. Roxanne, I like I like the fact that, um, uh, like as you're mentioning, um, sometimes people that get stuck, honestly, some of the best ways to to get out of that stuckness and um, is to help someone else, to serve another, you know. Go on some of these little short-term missions trips, you know, and and um and help build a house for somebody in Mexico. Mm. You know, I, I know a lot of people who have been really in the depths of depression and have somehow decided I'm going to go and serve. I'm going to go and serve at a at a soup kitchen. I'm going to go on that trip. I'm going to go and work at the church. You know, in the in the you know um, mopping up after <laughs> after babies <laughs> make right. throw up. Um, whatever it is, serving. I think. Um, as we endeavor to serve and not just be served, it helps us take our eyes off ourselves, mm. um, put them on other people, and um, and and somehow that lifts that can lift us out of a place of being so self-absorbed that we're useless, you know. And God goes, "Good, that's where I need you. I need you lifting your head up." You know, there's a story about uh, Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah, he's this prophet, and they threw him into this pit, you know, because they didn't like what he had to say, and he's just sitting there looking at the slime. And at a certain point, you know, uh, I guess in the story goes, God says, call to me and I'll show you things, great and marvelous things that you wouldn't know on your own. And essentially what he's kind of saying to Jeremiah is, Jeremiah, pick your head up. 
Stop looking at the slime and the muck and the situation that you're in. Yeah, you're in this situation, but if you look up to me, you look up, you may see new things, new ways uh, that I, and new paths um, uh, toward freedom um, that you wouldn't see if you just stay self-absorbed and with your head down looking at the slime. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty cool scripture. Jeremiah 33.3. Yeah, easy enough to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I absolutely love that. All right, everybody, Phil Joel, philjoel.com, uh, your new uh, newest album, your solo album, Better Than I Found It, and your book, Redwoods and Whales, Becoming Who You Actually Are. Everybody, get your hands on these things. Phil, thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy schedule to have this conversation with us today. Oh, thanks, Roxanne. This was fun. I enjoyed yeah, it. Was it was fun. So fun. I feel yeah. like I, I personally gained so much from it. It was awesome. It was awesome. Great. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, um, I'm going to go and have my second cup of coffee and my um, third piece of toast with Vegemite on it because it's breakfast time here. And um, yes, <laughs> you go right. and do what you're going to do, which is probably whatever it is, you're 18 hours behind. So I'm going to go and do what it is in the future. All right. Sounds good. Thank you again, Phil. You're awesome. You're awesome. Have fun in the future. All right, guys, that's all the time that we have with Phil Joel. What a blast. I know that this episode blessed you as much as it blessed me. Also, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Check out our social profiles at Dream Label Group. Check out our website, dreamlabelgroup.com. There you will find a mailing list. And if you join that mailing list, you will be some of the first to hear brand new music from Dream Label Group and receive updates about our awesome show. Also, guys, I want to welcome everybody, whether you're watching or listening through our podcast. For those of you that don't know, on our website, you can find a link to subscribe to our podcast. We are pretty much everywhere. You can find us at iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and so many more. Go check that out. All right, guys, until next week, stay blessed in him. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Roxanne Grace here. Thank you guys so much for watching Dream's YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single conversation or new music from Dream. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit the like and notification buttons and share this video with a friend who needs to hear it. Oh, and don't forget, you can subscribe and listen to the conversation anywhere podcasts are available. Thanks for watching.